Good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for connecting to our class. Today we will take time to study the very famous chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, which is all about faith. So before we get into our uh, study, let's begin with the word of prayer. And I want to request uh, one of us on the call to kindly lead in prayer. So please unmute and pray, please. Who would like to? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, the class that we are about to have, Jesus. God, I pray that Jesus, uh, even as we look into the chapter of faith, uh, we will be uh, equipped in our faith, we'll be fully convinced in our faith, and God, every story, uh, every life stories that we read, God, it will build our faith, Jesus, so that God, we could stand much more stronger for your kingdom. God, I give uh, Nancy Mom into your hands. We declare uh, your health over her, and uh, God, you be with her as she teaches us, God, uh, fill her with your knowledge and wisdom so that God, we could understand the deep truths of the Bible and uh, help us to open our spiritual minds and listen to with God and to accept it uh, in our hearts, to imprint the words in our hearts and our mind, Jesus. And God, I pray for good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session. May this class be done for your glory. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jafina. Uh, let's get straight into Hebrews chapter 11. We are going to read portions of it and then, you know, I'll quickly go ahead and explain them to us. So Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 to 4. If someone can please read four verses, we'll go to the rest of them later. Now, it was... the substance of the things of her, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made to things which are visible. Okay, verse 4 also. Okay, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous god testifying of his gifts and through it he being that still speaks amen thank you zeli thank you for uh, reading this all right so uh we've just see the introduction to faith and earlier the author was encouraging the believers to continue in faith and to not draw back so th that was the section we stopped at earlier in uh, hebrews chapter 10 where uh, the scripture said that you know verse 38 uh, of hebrews 10 now the just shall live by faith so the just shall live by faith uh, one of the earlier references to this is in the book of Habakkuk. Okay? So uh, Habakkuk 2.4, the just shall live by faith. And then it is repeated uh, in these portions of the New Testament, Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, and uh, Hebrews 10.38, where we know that as believers, we've got to live by faith. So this whole life, what is it uh, all about? It's about faith, isn't it? Uh, and so uh, for any believer, we've got to learn what faith is all about. Yeah, because if that is what uh, our life with God looks like, then I have to understand that particular subject. So faith is what I want to uh, learn 
so much about. So this entire passage has examples of people who have journeyed that way with faith. So what is it that we can learn from each person and their experience with God and their walk of faith? So that's the essence of uh, what we are going to study today, Hebrews chapter 11. So verse 1, it starts off by uh, introducing faith as um, uh, you know, it, it it is something that helps us perceive the unseen realm. So it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So in the unseen, even if things are invisible in the natural right now, uh, faith is a spiritual sense that God has given us. And that enables us, that is the evidence that you know, the things that we hope for, which are in the future, are going to take place. And uh, uh, in the invisible, while it is invisible, faith is what gives us that assurance that, yes, you know, these things are going to take place. So today, we have an evidence in our spirit about what God is going to do tomorrow. And that is what we call as faith. Uh, that is uh, an evidence, or you may want to call it a uh, substance, or you may want to call it a sense uh, or assurance, a confidence which we carry now about the things that are going to take place tomorrow as promised by God. So right now they are not seen, but very soon they will be seen or they will manifest in the natural realm. Verse 2 says, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. So the elders are who those who have gone before us, many of whose uh, lives have been recorded in the scriptures for us. So what gives them a good testimony? What makes a good testimony for these elders? Their faith. So their lives were lived by faith, whatever God called them to do. Now we can, of course, notice that each one's life was different. Each one's assignment was different, but there was a common thread running through all of their lives, which is faith. And it is faith with which they have fulfilled the purpose of God for their lives. And we are told that they have a good testimony because they lived by faith. Had they not lived by faith, they would not have had a good testimony. So then we go back to what we started with earlier, Romans 1, 17, the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? We are the just ones, uh, made just, made righteous through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus as believers. And so we have to live by faith and we have to learn to live by faith. Faith is very powerful. That's what he's stating here in verse 3. That's what we are uh, going to learn. That through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So uh, in order to give us uh, an example of how this faith works, because in verse 1, he said, the evidence of things that are not seen. What, what is that evidence? Faith, which we carry. So he's giving an example about the creation of the world. The world at that point was invisible. But what existed? The word of God. And when the word of God was spoken, we know that the world or the, uh, the universe came to be. So the visible appeared later. But before that, how did God function? You know, many people call this the faith of God, that God spoke, God believed, God spoke, and things took place. And then the uh, things that were faith in, and they were invisible at that point became visible okay, when faith was exercised. So that is how the worlds were formed. And we understand that this is the manner in which the uh, like this is the law that God has in place that while things may be invisible, when we exercise faith, you know, those things which God has promised, those things which we hope for, they will become visible. Okay? But right now, while they are invisible, what we carry with us is faith. That is why it says, now faith is. 
So faith is there in our hearts. But the evidence of this faith or, or the manifestation of this faith will soon take place and they will be visible in the future. So who are some such people who have held on to that assurance, that evidence, that substance, and trusted God for the promises to manifest later in their lives? A list is uh, uh, given for us over here, and we are going to look at various people's lives. So we read verse 4 as well, which is about Abel. Now, Abel, uh, there's not much said about Abel in the scriptures. We only observe that he, together with his brother, made an offering to God. And the, uh, the lives of these two people, Abel and Cain, uh, you know, when, when we look at it, we see that Abel, his sacrifice was accepted, whereas Cain's sacrifice was not accepted. And we know that Cain gave God uh, from the fields and uh, he did not give his best. Okay, He just gave him whatever, you know, anything. But uh, Abel made the sacrifice of uh, uh, animals uh, and Abel's sacrifice was accepted. So then we have this question about why is it that God accepted Cain's sac uh, Abel's sacrifice and left out Cain's sacrifice. So Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4 has the explanation. Basically, the reason for why Abel's sacrifice was accepted is faith. So it's not even the quality of the sacrifice. You know, we recall that uh, uh, example in the Gospels, right, where there's a widow. She offers only two uh, coins, uh, whereas a rich person who may be offering way more. Uh, but God was pleased with the attitude at the heart of this widow who gave so little. So it was not really the quantity or the uh, quality you know, of the material which was being offered as much as it was the heart with which it was being offered. So here again, between Cain and Abel, what God noticed was Cain's, uh, Abel's faith. Okay, And that is why Abel is listed here in the uh, men of God, the women of God who live by faith. Uh, isn't it beautiful that there's only one recorded uh, sacrifice of Abel and that is now pointed out in Hebrews chapter 11 when God wants to talk about faith. So it was so precious to God that uh, though we don't read many other things about Abel's life, God is still speaking of one sacrifice that was made by this man. The reason why God was impressed is because of the faith with which he made that sacrifice. And that is very encouraging for us. You know, uh, let, let me read that uh, verse one more time. It says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. So God was blessed by his gift, uh, and you know he obtained a witness, like how we said earlier, those who walk by faith obtained a good testimony. Here, Abel, he obtained a witness that he was righteous, and God testifying of his gifts. Okay? God accepted his gifts. It also says, Though he is dead, his gift still speaks. So it's very, very powerful. Abel, his one sacrifice is being spoken of by God. Because the, the element there is faith. Now today you and I, we do so many things for God. But the question is, how are we doing it? Even if we did one thing, but we did it by faith, it stays with God. That, oh, okay, you know, my child, my son, my daughter, they did this, but I can see their heart of faith behind what they are doing. And notice, Abel is gone. And for, it was a very unfortunate thing that he got, you know, killed by his brother because of jealousy. 
But what does the Bible say? It says that though he is dead, his work, his sacrifice still, still speaks. So uh, we can move on you know, into eternity. Because all of us, as we've read in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, for it is appointed for man to die once, after which is judgment. So our life, um, we will run the course of our life and come to the end of it. But even when people are dead and gone, works of faith still speak. Okay, there are many works of faith. Maybe there are songs that people wrote by faith. There are ministries people started by faith. There are books which were written by faith. You know, we can uh, trace back uh, things like that or, or uh, our own loved ones' decisions that, you know, our parents made or prayers that were made, uh, choices of faith. People may be gone, but the works of faith continue to have an impact okay, for God. And that's the reality. And that's what we learn from the life of Abel, that his sacrifice was accepted because there was faith attached. And uh, even one deed done by faith impresses God. Not just, not just a bunch of things that uh, we, we do. And also the third thing we, we see is that a work of faith speaks and continues to cause an impact. And uh, that itself encourages us to be people of faith. So that is something we learn from the life of Abel. Let's move forward and let's look at verses 5 and 6. Could somebody kindly read these two verses? Someone was uh, wanting to read earlier and missed the chance. So, whoever that was, you could please go ahead. Verses five and six. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. Thank you, Jeffina. Uh, so we read about Enoch here. And uh, we know that he, again, is a unique personality. Not too much written about Enoch. Uh, there is a, a passage in Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 to 24, that describes his life. Uh, and obviously, he was a man of faith, which is why he's in this list. And we are being told, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. So uh, it's unique that a human being did not taste death. How did that happen? Through faith, he walked with the Lord and God took him without tasting death. And uh, we are also given an insight into his life that he had a good testimony, which means he was a man of God. He was desiring to live for God, live for the purposes of God, live for the glory of God, that kind of a man. So he had a good testimony and he pleased God. And his journey with God was such that uh, uh, because of the kind of faith that Enoch carried, he is one of those rare people in scripture who has not tasted death, which otherwise you know, is a, a part of every human being's journey. So after having spoken about Abel and Enoch and uh, their life of faith, in verse 6, there is an encouraging word for all of us. And that is that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So uh, how can we please God? You know, there's a question that we all ask. Can God be happy with me every day? Of course, he can be happy 
with us every day. Uh, what makes him happy when we walk by faith? You know, when we walk uh, with, when we overcome our fear, when we, um, you know, work on our doubts, when we spend time in God's word, strengthen our faith and live by faith. That is what will bring a smile on God's face. So if we want to bring a smile on God's face, here is the key. Walk by faith. Okay? Uh, of course, our lives and the circumstances that we are in today are so different from the people who we are learning about. But in any given circumstance, you know, we can ask ourselves the question, am I doing this in faith? Or am I just doing it because it needs to be done? Or am I in a place of doubt? If we are in a place of doubt or apathy or ignorance, to just move ourselves to a place of faith, which always brings a smile on God's face and makes him happy. So faith is what makes God happy. That's what we are told. And without faith, it's impossible. We can never impress God. Uh, and God is always looking for faith. If he finds faith, he's impressed. Okay, So that is the key that we are being given. And we're also told, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So that, again, is a very beautiful scripture that encourages us about God's faithfulness. That we must, obviously, we know that God is there, and these are his uh, uh, certain attributes, that God is good. But you know, when it comes to our uh, personal faith in God, uh, because of a tough journey, okay, many of us as believers, we can say things like, I know God is good, I know God is faithful, but for whatever reason, he's not working in my life. You know what, for whatever reason, uh, I think, you know, he is not... He's not hearing my prayers. Uh, but that actually shows a lack of faith. We are saying that we believe in God. We believe that God is good. And we believe that God is faithful. But, you know, he's probably busy with everyone else's life. So, okay, let him be. Uh, but I will be faithful. You know, that's a very self-righteous attitude. Whereas uh, when we really believe in God and we are walking by faith, we will also be rejoicing uh, because there's a very real hope that if I am in faith, I'm going to see the fruit of that. If I am walking by faith, you know, I'm going to enjoy the rewards of faith, the blessings of faith. Uh, and, and so that is true faith, you know, like a child where there is an expectation that I am doing what God is requiring of me and there is going to be a reward. But if we don't have that attitude and when we are saying, yeah, God is good, but you know, it's going to be like this. It's always going to be hard. I don't think, and I'm not even seeking. I've heard people say this, seek the face of God, but don't seek his hand. You know, so we have to be so deep and so strong in God that we're always looking at him and his attributes and all. But we don't want any blessings from him. Like if he doesn't bless us also, it's okay. But the beauty is that the God we serve, uh, you know, if, when the face comes, the hat also comes, isn't it? It's part of the same person. And so the blessings of God are also very real. And he's a God who blesses. So when we stand in faith, we are going to see his blessings. And that assurance as believers, we need to carry. And that gives us great joy uh, to know that Truly, he's a God who is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when I am seeking God, the efforts that I am making to uh, know his word, to be in his presence, to walk by faith, I'm going to see the fruit. I'm going to see the result. You know, it keeps us happy. Uh, faith pleases God, but faith also does a work in us that causes us to rejoice. Now, let's move on. Let's look at a few other people. Uh, verse 7 talks about Noah. Could someone kindly read uh, about Noah from verse 7? By faith, Noah, being divinely warned by things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, 
by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Zeli. We see uh, what Noah did. So we all understand, we know his story uh, that God spoke to him and uh, uh, told him that there is going to be a flood. And we know that this came by revelation to Noah. Uh, and the, the unique aspect is that it was an unprecedented event in the sense that before Noah, uh, the world did not experience a flood. So it was the first time ever that the, a flood was going to take place and to this great uh, magnitude. So obviously, it would have taken faith on Noah's part to believe the unprecedented. You know, when God is saying, I'm going to do this, and no one has ever seen that before, including Noah, for Noah to say, OK, God, I believe. I know you're going to do it was a great thing and uh, uh, you know it's it's so beautiful that each of these scriptures about the people start with by faith noah by faith abel we'll go on you know, by faith abraham so by faith noah he believed he believed okay and another beautiful thing that we see about faith reality about faith is that faith is also about actions when we say that we have faith, uh, James talks about this. He says, if you have faith, you, you need to show it through the work that you do. So James 2.26 uh, is a, a reference that speaks about this faith and works go hand in hand. Noah believed and therefore he did. What did he do? He prepared an ark. So today, that's a lesson for us. When we say that we are believing God uh, for our ministry, you know, are we, are we diligently serving God in the ministry, knowing that, yes, the increase will come, the blessing will come. My faith is seen by my actions. Or, you know, if you're saying, I know God will bless the work of my hands, are we working? Uh, because then we are showing that we are believing God that he's going to bless the work of our hands. Or it can be anything else, that we are believing God for something, uh, you know, and, and work has to be a part of that. Because it's simply showing that we believe. And that's the example of Noah. He first of all believed something so amazing. Uh, and uh, it takes courage to believe God like that. Secondly, he did something because he believed. And thirdly, we notice that scripture says, by what he did, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. So. Uh, do we see Noah going ahead and uh, condemning people and saying, you know, if you don't believe, you'll go to hell. You'll go to hell. You are not believing that uh, God is going to send a flood. We don't read about Noah doing things like that. But when Noah obeyed God and he started building the ark, God spoke to him and said, okay, you build the ark. Noah's obedience, okay, automatically... What it could have done is, it could have brought conviction in the hearts of people who saw him. They would have looked at Noah and said, uh, why is this man so convinced? Why is he so assured? And how come he's doing these things? And the actions of Noah uh, would have spoken in people's hearts and brought conviction. So that is the kind of condemnation that we are looking at right now. So. Uh, even when we are obeying God, it might happen that unbelievers around us or people who are walking in disobedience feel convicted by just our lives. They look at our lives and they go, uh, you know, if they are living like that, that's the right way to live. Maybe I'm missing something. I too should be living in that way. So uh, the, the truth that we learn is that even a life of faith, let's say we don't speak words and we instruct people or you know, we, we preach at people. Maybe we are not doing those things. Even when we don't, don't do those things, a life of faith is good enough to point people to God. 
to point people to righteousness and for people to be able to uh, sense that hey there's something missing uh, and maybe you know i should be like this person who is walking in faith towards their god so a life of faith is a powerful life and that's something we learn from the life of noah okay are you all with me are you all able to uh, get what i'm saying okay so uh, please continue uh, being engaged let's look at uh, verses 8 to 12 so i request uh, another person i think zali and uh, jeffina have already read could uh, another person please go ahead and read this passage verses 8 to 12 by faith abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with isaac and jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is god okay uh, till 12 john 12 by faith sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed as she bore and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised therefore from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore thank you john uh so we've looked at uh, Abel, Noah, now Abraham and Sarah. Uh, and as the scriptures are describing here, the example of Abraham teaches us obedience. Because here is a man that God spoke to. Here is a man that God promised a land uh, as his inheritance. But here is also a man who was... Uh, not given, you know, all the answers that he probably would have wanted. So being in a place uh, where Abraham did not have all the answers, there's one thing we know he did, and that is he just obeyed God. He took God at his word and he went ahead. He left everything. He went forward with God, trusting that God would lead him on his journey. So he's an example of obedience, great obedience. Uh, he's an example of faith and trust. What God said, Abraham believed. And we know another uh, portion of scripture that says that it was accounted to him as righteousness. What was accounted? Because Abraham believed. So his example is an example of obedience. It's an example of trust and faith in God uh, that he did not even know where he was going, scriptures say, but he still went. Okay, he, he was courageous to journey with God. And uh, again, what else? What else do we see from Abraham's life? We notice from verse 9 and uh, 10 that he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10, for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So he said, Abraham, a man of obedience, a man of faith and trust. Abraham, a man of patience. Okay, a man of patience. And uh, this is already quite obvious when he trusted God for Isaac. Okay, but even beyond that, Abraham is trusting God for the inheritance that God had already spoken about. And uh, it's interesting to note that his entire life is a journey towards that promise of the inheritance. And we are being told that in that journey, there were times when Isaac and Jacob were with Abraham. So you see, uh, a part of the promise is fulfilled. His sons are uh, there, right? His, his uh, children are there. His descendants are there. Uh, and that part is being fulfilled. But another part where he has to see that promised land is not yet done. It's not yet done. So the journey is continuing and Abraham's patience is still continuing. He already got the results through his patience for Isaac. But this time around, uh, Abraham is waiting for that promised land. 
And uh, there is a deeper insight being given to us in verse 10, where we are told that Abraham is waiting for a city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. So the uh, picture we get is that Abraham probably had prophetic insight beyond that portion of physical land that God was, God had told him he would receive, right? What is that prophetic insight? He probably had that revelation that one day Christ would come, you know, and uh, uh, redemption would come and uh, we, we will have eternal life. This builder and maker is God, the foundations of a city, the godly city. You know, we talk about the heavenly Jerusalem, way beyond, way beyond. Okay, the earthly life that Abraham had. Uh, and it's amazing to think, how is it that people under the old covenant could have insight like this? How could they have revelation like this? It's the work of the Holy Spirit, right? In their lives. Uh, and uh, Abraham is being seen as a man of obedience, a man of faith and trust, a man of uh, patience. We could also say a man who received revelation from God because of his faithful walk with the Lord. And so beautiful that uh, people could live like this and journey like this with God. And so this is Abraham's example for us. Okay, And uh, Abraham, uh, if, if, we, if we go by what has been spoken to us, he remained a sojourner. You know, a sojourner is a person who is traveling. Uh, he's on a pilgrimage and who is seeking a destination. Uh, and uh, Quite literally, you know, Abraham did not receive that promise, uh, you know, the boundaries of the promised land and the way we would imagine in his lifetime, he would walk into it. But we will see later on that Abraham started the journey and, you know, the journey uh, kept progressing as uh, Isaac came into the picture, Jacob came into the picture. And then, you know, we see how God's people for 400 years, they were uh, they were slaves in Egypt. And then eventually you have a deliverer, Moses showing up, and then the Joshua generation actually walking into the promised land. But Abraham started it. And, uh, you know, Abraham, uh, through faith, you know, that there's a place for a man to dream and have a vision. And Abraham was that man who dreamed with God or dreamt with God, whatever is the right English. Uh, but, you know, he uh, he journeyed with God through faith, rejoicing that one day his descendants will have that portion of land. And that's the beautiful journey of Abraham. Now, coming to Sarah. Uh, Sarah also experienced uh, the blessings of God and the promises of God in her life. And one of the highlights of Sarah's life is uh, giving birth to Isaac. And how did that happen? It was an impossible thing because scriptures very clearly tell us she was past the age. Past the age of what? Uh, the past the age of what she, you know, what she uh, desired for, which is to have a child. And she was past the childbearing age. And we know it's an impossibility at Sarah's age to bear a child. You know? And we, we know that she was around 90 years. Now, tell me, if, if something like that happens, it will be on YouTube. It will be trending <laughs> that, OK, there's a woman of this age who has born a child uh, naturally. And God did the impossible in Sarah's life. Uh, and and it, it, it's nothing. Uh, I mean, it's a big thing that has happened in history that a woman of her age could bear a child. Now, how could the impossible happen? See how the scripture starts. By faith, Sarah. You know, say by faith, Abel. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. So it's a story of faith. And by faith, we are told Sarah received strength to conceive seed. So whatever capacity was required to bear a child physically, Sarah got that. How could she get it? Faith made it happen for Sarah. And she was able to bear a child, even in her old age. And Sarah judged God's word faithful. Right? God is faithful, his promise is real. And that's also 
the testimony of Abraham. We said earlier, Abraham believed God. And that was counted to him for righteousness. Sarah believed God. Now, were they perfect? No. We talked about the steps of Abraham's faith, right? Like from Romans chapter 4. Uh, the faith journey which they made, they grew stronger in God. Okay, there were parts of their journey where they were um, uh, immature. They were uh, maybe, you could say, doubting. All of that is there yeah, as part of their journey. Uh, but eventually, you know, their faith grew stronger and stronger and stronger. And they came to a place of assurance. And then they were able to receive the promise. So even in the case of Sarah, we know, we read about how she initially laughed. Right when she was told you're going to have a child, uh, you know, around this time, the scriptures say Sarah laughed. Okay, but look at the beauty of this. Once she learned to believe God, yeah, it's sounding crazy, and so she laughed. But when she learned to believe God, God gave her a son called Isaac. And what is the meaning of Isaac? Laughter. Okay, her laughter of unbelief is turned into a laughter of faith that it can happen. God gave an Isaac, which is a laughter, into her life, which was the impossible made possible by faith. So, by faith, Sarah made this journey of bearing a son, and he is the son of promise through whom all the blessings came about. Right? Uh, and uh, so it's really beautiful that these two people God worked with and God worked through and they became a testimony of faith for us. In verse 12, we are told, therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky, sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand, which is by the seashore. So both Abraham and Sarah, you know, if you do a case study, they are impossible, impossibilities uh, are the reality of their lives. The man is very old. And here, verse 12, it says, a man, him as good as dead. He's too old. Okay, that's the impossibility. Sarah, too old. That's the impossibility. But you notice that God can rewrite a story. The impossibility can become a possibility. But what is the ingredient which is required to make the impossibility a possibility? By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. And their lives became the beginning of lives of faith with their descendants, you know, coming through as men and women of faith, impacting, you know, thousands uh, and millions of people, generations of people. But it took two of these people to believe God to begin with, to make that long journey. And that is the beauty of lives of faith. Okay, Somebody got it started. And these two uh, people, from their impossibility, God worked something miraculous. So come on, let's read. Let's read from verse 13 to verse 16. I want to request uh, another one of our students here on the call to go ahead and read, please. OK, Brother Lubega, if that's possible, or success, Rosalind. Anyone? Can I get back what you're saying, ma'am? Yeah, uh, I'm requesting you to read, uh, brother, from uh, Hebrews 11, verses 13 to 16. Verses 13 to 16. Yes. These all died in faith, not receiving the promises, but having seen them far off. We assured, assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on us. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland, and truly if they had called 
to mind the country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now, they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Amen. 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 Thank you. And Obega. So some highlights. I'll just touch on the highlights here. One highlight is uh, they saw the promises afar off. So you know, these people, they knew that God is going to do certain things in the future, some in their own lifetime, some way beyond their lifetime. But they had a vision of that. Or you could also put it as they received a promise. And that is the first step to hear from God, to receive the word, to receive the vision. Uh, and that's the first step. And they did it. So they saw the promises afar off. Secondly, the second highlight is they were assured of them. They were assured of them. So in the faith journey, once we receive the promise, the next one is to become strong in that promise. What was the example of these people? They were assured of them, meaning they were convinced. Okay, they were, they believed God. They, they knew, yes, God is going to do this. There was no doubt. They came to a place of believing it strongly. So they were assured of them. That's the second highlight. The third highlight, of course, is they embraced them, meaning they gave themselves to that promise. Uh, they uh, thought of the promise often. They lived for the promise. They looked forward for the promise. So it shows that they, they completely received it, they accepted it, they embraced it. So three highlights which will help us in our journey. First is we need to see the promises. You see the promises. Second, be assured of them. Third is embrace them. Begin to walk towards those promises, give our lives for that promise. And then you know, we will see God uh, fulfill those promises in our lives. And the last part that I'll touch on, I know we have just about a minute, Verse 16 here, it says, therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. We know that uh, as we sing that song, right? Miracle worker. Uh, what is it? That line? Uh, Even when we are not seeing his working, right? Like the line goes something like that. So they God. Make a miracle worker. Yeah, correct, Excuse correct. Uh, I, I was mentioning that one line that says, uh, you know, while we are not seeing his working. How, how does it go, Jeffy? Even when I don't see it, you're working. Okay. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Okay, so that's that's the line. So when we uh, embrace the promises, this is the reality that even when we are not seeing, right now we we feel like oh nothing is happening, but God is working on our behalf. Okay, that is one reality. Second reality. God is not ashamed to be called their God. Meaning, earlier we said, uh, faith will put a smile on God's face. Second, faith makes God proud of us. Okay? So God will be so proud that here is my child who has put their trust in me, who has believed me for the, uh, believed me at my word. So, uh, it's a you know very encouraging passage here that we are looking at where we see the lives of people who walk by faith. It pleased God. It made God proud, and that's what God wants from us: to live, to uh, hear His promises, be assured of His promises, embrace His promises, and you know God is so proud to be called as our God when we walk by faith. Okay, so we'll stop right here. We can pick up from verse uh, 17 tomorrow. Uh, and I want to request uh, one of our students to please pray and close off. Yeah, anyone can pray. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful moment. We thank you for the lesson we've had. Lord, as we've been studying about the, the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews as a wall of fame of faith, Lord, let us also be emulators. Let us also be doers and not only hearers of the word. We pray to bless the pastor who has been teaching us. Bless everybody who has been on this call. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, let us make next time in peace, but on, not in pieces. I do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and everybody says, Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you all. See you all tomorrow.